So if you're working on a new soap or just something else that needs to have an intro sequence, well, we can do something like this right inside Premiere Pro. Hey, what's up guys? It's Jordy here again for Cinecom.net. And yeah, me and Kim, we are working on this new soap series. We don't know what it will be about yet, but uh, we decided to start with the intro sequence and see how it will go from there. You know, originally we wanted to go for something more like this, but you know, since it's such an internet hype already, you know, it wouldn't be original. Kim turns herself around and at this point here, we're going to freeze the time and we're going to cut her out so that she comes loose from the background and have kind of a little motion into it so that there's more dynamic and have her name pop up. And we're also going to work with the colors so that there's difference between the background color and the front color. As well, we're going to create this line around her, which uh, creates some more of that cartoon or that cutout feeling. So let's say at this point right here, we want the video to stop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut right here. There we go. And I'm going to right click on a piece that has to be still right now. And I'm going to go to frame hold options, click on that. And for the frame hold, make sure that it's checked. You want to select in point and just press OK. And now the video is still from that point. Now, since we're going to need her and the background separate, we're going to make a duplication of this layer right here. Just hold down your alt key and drag that clip to channel number two. And that will make a duplication of that. And with that top clip selected, head over to your effects controls, opacity, and from here we're going to take the mask tool to actually cut her out. Now to work a bit more precise, I'm going to zoom in as well on the video. Let's just make that 200% and just scroll to the point where we're going to start. That is somewhere here in the bottom. Now what you want to do with your mask is always create curves so that you will avoid those hard intersections. So let me just show you that. Right here, we're going to follow the arm. Now, it's not that important that it's so precise, but you do want to add like this very minimum curve to it, like so. And so we're just going to follow the whole thing here and just mask her out. Now, this is a process that takes a bit. If you're more familiar with Photoshop, you can also do the same thing there and then just export it as a PNG file and import that again inside Premiere Pro, but make sure that you have the correct frame selected, of course. There we go, and we are rounds. Just make sure to close your path and now the mask is completed. And you're probably thinking now, wow, that guy can work pretty fast. Well, yeah, that's a technique I'm going to learn you in a different video, but it ain't easy. It's years of practice, or you can also just learn how to use the rate stretch tool. So inside your mask options right here, I'm going to decrease the fetter because that's not something that we want to have. So in disabling channel number one for a moment, you will see that we have cut her out pretty well. And now we're going to create this stroke around her. And that is actually done by a very simple effect right here, which is called paint bucket right here. Now we can drag this effect right onto this clip because that will cause some problems. If you are working with a PNG file from Photoshop, then you can do this. But if you just created your mask like I did right inside Premiere, you wanna nest this clip first. So just right click on that clip and choose nest. And that will actually put this clip right here inside a new sequence. So I'm just going to call this cut out Kim, press OK, and that will replace that clip with a nested sequence. So if we're going to double click on that, you will see the actual clip in there. So now we can drag that paint bucket effect onto that nested sequence. And uh, that will do something weird with your clip, but no worries, we're going to change some settings in here. The first thing you want to do is change the fill selector to transparency. And next you want to change the stroke setting to stroke because that's what we want and bang you've already got the desired effect now of course you want to increase that white a bit more there we go and also for the color we're going to pick white in this example there we go and that's it if you are having trouble by the way then you can also change the tolerance a bit you will see if it's too low then your stroke will kind of disappear. Also, if you are noticing flickering during your shot, and we're going to see that definitely when we're going to animate that, uh, you might want to increase the tolerance as well. So let's do that. Close your paint bucket and head over to your motion settings. We're going to scale this clip a bit up, but as you're seeing, uh, she's being scaled towards the left side here, not really centered. And that's because it's scaling around its anchor point, which is in the middle of that clip. So you want to take that anchor point and just drag that in the middle of her. Now dragging that anchor point is only something you can do from, I believe, 
Creative Cloud Update 2015 or 2014, perhaps. If you're working an earlier version like CS6, perhaps, then you want to change the anchor point right in here manually. All right, so let's go to the beginning of that clip and I'm going to create a keyframe for the scale, then go all the way to the end of that clip and then just increase that scale. Not too much. Let's just make that 104 or something just so that you have a very subtle movement, perhaps a bit more. Just make that 106 or something. There we go. This is a nice subtle movement. Now we do like to have all the attention going to Kim in this shot. Well, actually Kim wanted to have all the attention. Initially, I just wanted to leave it like this, but you know, women. So we're going to make the background a bit darker. Also add some black and white to it so that all the attention can go to her. Select your background clip and head over to your little metric color tools. And we're just going to decrease the exposure a bit and also decrease the saturation. Now we also like to animate that as well a bit because if we're going to take a look at from the uh, moving shot to the still frame, you know, it's pretty hard cut right here, going from that color to the black and white. So also here, select that clip, head over to your effect controls in the Lumetri color effect, I open up the basic correction here and create a keyframe for the, let me see, the exposure and the saturation. There we go. Now this is the ending position that we're creating right here. So we're going to head back in time and here we're just going to reset that value. We're just clicking on that button and that will create a keyframe for the default value. So now we have it slightly animated. Perhaps you want to play with the distance right here to make your animation go faster or slower. Something that you always want to do, by the way, is select your ending keyframes, right click on it and say ease in so that the animation goes very smooth. If you'd like to learn more about this, then definitely click on a cart up there to learn advanced keyframing inside Premiere. So it's looking pretty nice already. The only thing left we have to do now is add her name here on the right side. So if you're on a Windows, then just press Ctrl T. And if you're on a Mac, press Command T to bring up the new title box. You can give it a name if you like, or just press OK. So we can start designing. Make sure that this box right here is selected as well so that you can see the background of the video. So Kim is going to play Kimberly. And if she sees this video, she's probably going to kill me. She hates it when I say that. So if you don't see a new video next week, then uh, yeah, you know what happened. I'm just going to design here a very simple title. This tutorial is not about title design, so I'm just going to go quickly over this. Just perhaps put this into an italic, a bit smaller. There we go. Kim plays Kimberly. <laughs> I really wonder what kind of soap we could create here. So you want to place this title between these two clips. So we're going to move the cutout Kim one channel higher and just place that title between it. So just drag that to the same length. There we go. And the great thing we can do now, if you select that title, is uh, animate the position and as you can see, it can go right behind her. So we're going to bring this outside of the image. There we go. Go to the beginning and create a keyframe for the position. Then go a bit further in time and animate it so that it sits on the right side. And also here, right click, temporal interpolation and say ease in so that it doesn't stop so hard. And I'm going to bring these keyframes a bit closer to each other. There we go. Perfect. Also here, we're going to add a bit of movement to it. I'm going to add some scale motion. So we just create a keyframe for the scale hundred percent and just increase that a tiny bit. There we go. So that there is just some movement into it. Isn't this looking nice? And there's one last thing that I want to do and that's add some motion blur to it. In your effects controls, search for directional blur, drag that onto it. And we're going to add some uh, blurriness to it in the 90 degree angle right here. I'm just going to go quickly over this because uh, if you'd like to see a tutorial more in depth on how to create motion blur inside Premiere Pro, then again, click in a card up there. So you want to keyframe the blur length on the ending where it stops, it's zero. Make sure to create a keyframe for that. And a bit back, we're going to add some blurriness to it. So it starts with blurriness at 15. And when a title sits still, you know, there is no blurriness anymore. So right now we have some motion blur. So there we go, guys. This right here is the amazing intro sequence for your next soap series. If you have any more questions, just pop them in the comments below. You can also find a link in the description to where you can download this project file. And make sure to thumbs up this video if you like it. Also share it with your friends, share it on the internet. That helps me a lot. But most importantly, stay creative.